Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, sorry for the huge delay, I've been away with work and I've actually started a project which is quite cool. Um, I'll be doing some videos on it, um, but not for a little while. Okay, so I know the last video ended kind of abruptly. Uh, I think that was an issue with my editing. I think it was literally as I was going away. Um, so the the issue was is I also left it on a bug, which is obviously not the best thing to do. Uh, so first thing in this episode, we're just going to go ahead and fix that bug. So it's under the combat region. That is basically, I just got these the wrong way around. It's supposed to be uh, greater than. So if it's greater than zero, then we start counting it down. Um, and I actually want to get rid of this uh, is attacking. So after those little changes, we should be able to go in and see the timer actually working. So I'll start combat and then basically there'll be a little timeout when I'm done. So there we go, so I start the character for a little bit and then the timeout kind of uh, gives in. So we can attack and attack and if I then attack for a little while it just goes back to a normal movement. So this will be in the case of we start attacking the enemy and realize shit, <laughs> we don't want to do that, let's run away. Um, so yeah, alright, so what I also want to do in this episode is add a a heavy attack. So if I hold the button uh, we'll play our hook. We've been using our hook as our main attack, uh, which I don't actually want to do. So I'm going to go into our models and fill. And under melee, I'm actually just going to bring through punch two. There we go. All right, I want to go to parameters and also add another trigger for melee punch. Uh, we'll call it punch one. Um, and we'll, we'll rename these later on. Alright, make our transitions, make sure this the initial transition has our condition of punch one. Cool. The other thing was we need to add that trigger. So we'll open up the animation window. Make sure we click on fill. Click the little drop down onto our new animation called punch. And let's just uh, go to the scene view here. Pick a point in this animation that we want to... Uh, trigger our stop attacking. So I'm going to go for 20 seconds. I'm going to add an event and do our uh, finish attacking. All right, I'm going to save, close that. So the next thing is to actually put these into use. So what I'm going to do, oh, sorry, still under combat. I'm going to duplicate this event. I'm going to call it fire one hold. So for the heavy attacks, I don't care if I'm already attacking. I want these to take priority. We can add another trigger to check if we're heavy attacking. Another billion, sorry. Um, but we'll do that a little bit later on. So our normal attack will now just be melee punch one. And our heavy attack will be our melee hook. All right, so what we now want to do is um, open up our player input actions. Go down to actions and we'll just add a, another action for fire one hold. We'll bind it to the left mouse button again. And under interactions, we'll add a hold. Cool. Under fire one, the original left mouse button, we're going to add an interactions for press and add the behavior to press and release. Cool, I'm going to click save asset, let that save. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the fire one isn't called until I release it and it's released before the hold has been triggered. So obviously we're using the same binding here. Uh, when we go to use the hold, it's going to call this one as soon as we obviously press the button, uh, which we don't want to happen because it'll make the animations look a bit funny as we go to start to punch and then switch to our other animation to do a powerful punch. So I'm going to create a private float, um, which will just be our, uh, we'll go fire one timer. Uh, don't need to give a default value. Okay. And so down in our calculate, calculate combat, what we're going to do is we're just going to say if by one timer is greater than zero, 
or we'll do a great greater or equal to zero. Well, basically just minus equals time dot delta time. It's nice and simple. And then in our fire one, we'll say if fire timer is less than or equal to zero, then set it to 0 0.4 and return. Cool. Um, what we're actually going to do with this is we'll stick that inside the, the actual uh, condition here. Cool. All right, so let's quickly just test that that works. So we go in here, all oh, hit play. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, I forgot to actually map it. So we'll go to awake. And here where we map fire one, we'll map fire one hold. So the fire hold, fire one hold will trigger the fire one hold function. All right, so now let's give it a go. If I hold down the button, we do a hook. If I tap the button, we do a punch. Perfect. All right, now the only thing is I do want to speed up that punch to 1.6 because it's punching very slow. I don't think it's going to hurt anyone. Here we go. Give this a go now. There we go. And then a hook. Cool. So we can punch, punch, and then hook if we hold down the button. Cool. <clears throat> the other thing is I want to put in our kick. So let me just quickly find one of these I want to use. Okay, I'll pop this one in. Okay, so we'll add another parameter trigger and we'll call it melee kick one. Um, just the same as we did with the others. <clears throat> Make our transitions. Um, <clears throat> make sure our initial state has a condition, melee kick one, and then obviously make sure we have our event, melee, melee kick one, go to scene, so we can end it around the golden event. And finish attacking. Right. So I uh, don't know why I hit play because I didn't change anything. Okay, so let's go into our player input actions, um, and we'll we're going to do the exact same things. So we're going to have um, our kick button, and we're also going to have a kick hold. Okay, so we'll put, we'll uh, tie this to, uh, say, F on the keyboard. Add the same interactions we have on the other one. So press, um, press and release. And then kick hold, same key, F on the keyboard. And our hold interaction. We've got kick and kick hold. All right. So let's go ahead and add these. I'm just going to duplicate these. We'll have kick. Oh, I need to save asset here. Don't forget to do that. There's <laughs> nothing will come through. All right, so we got kick and kick hold. Okay, so now we need to create our functions that we're going to be triggering. So obviously. We're going to duplicate our fires and obviously just rename them to kick and kick hold. We'll just make sure that we call those functions. So kick, kick hold. All right. Now we're also going to duplicate a lot of duplicating going on the fire one timer 
and create a kick timer. We'll take that down to our function here. And where we use fire one timer, obviously we just want to use our kick timer. And we'll come down and we'll also add it in here. So if kick timer greater or equal to zero, kick timer minus equals time dot delta time. Okay, so we kind of got two inputs going on. We have our punching, hard punch, and a kick. So let's go ahead and uh, see what this looks like. So the kick right now is still calling the punching triggers. I should be able to, if I tap F, yep, it does the normal punch. And if I hold F, that's the power punch. But let's quickly change that. So I only brought in one kick. Let's go ahead and bring in the other kick now. Yes, it's starting to get a little bit busy. <laughs> okay, so for our kick two, make the same transitions. We're also going to add a, another trigger for melee kick two. All right, and then we will add a under melee kick two. We'll make sure we add that condition to call that trigger. All right, so let's go back to our C-sharp and we will, instead of using our punches, we will use our kicks. So we've got kick one and under kick hold, we'll have our kick two. All right, let's give this a go now. I hit F, do the kick. I hold F, do the roundhouse. Cool. Um, just like with the others, I'm gonna speed these up a bit. 1.6 and 1.6. Let's take a look how they look now. Okay, it's a lot quicker. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do now is quickly just make sure we have our finish attacking trigger on our the new kick that we added. We'll go kick two. Um, and it looks like this animation has already got some events in. Okay, so I'm going to delete those animation events. We'll add in hours. We'll go through, find where we want the attack to end. Let's say around about there. Add our event. And then add finish attacking. Alright, let's hit play. I hold F, do our roundhouse, tap it, we do our kick. Okay. And then we also have our normal punches and our power punch, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so stay tuned for the next episode. Uh, we're basically going to round this off for the minute until we move on to our targeting system, um, and then we'll plug them together, and then we'll move on to our ranged system, which will be the, uh, the fun part. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.